Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, so, this is actually being streamed as well, so if there's anybody in the chat as we go, I won't be able to read it. Uh, but this video is intended for YouTube, uh, but I figured, you know, uh, I, j I will just say this too. If anybody out there wants to stream or you have an interest in streaming, uh, it's very exciting, very fun, can be, you know, a little scary at times. But I can highly recommend this, uh, what is it called, Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, it's It's been freaking amazing, man. It's free. You can download it. Uh, you can click a button to stream uh, through Picardo.tv. That's where I'm at. Um, but it also records uh, at a very good resolution and not nothing that I would really um, have a problem with or, or not recommend enough. So I just wanted to put that out there. If you guys are looking for a way to kind of combine, combine, not even really streaming, you can just record your screen with that software. Check it out. Uh, but that's not the point of this video. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, I'm still working on Worlds in Peril stuff here. And this here is... Uh, for the Worlds in Play Peril RPG handbook. Okay, so some of the stuff I'm tasked with is just drawing these kinds of images here, and then on the left here, for those of you that are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, it's like that mixed with uh, superheroes. Okay, so all over here is going to be player text that players are going to need to know uh, in order to play the game, which is, you know, standard stuff. But books need artwork, right? They need some pretty pictures. So that's what I'm trying to do put some pretty pictures in there. Uh, so that's what these characters here are for as well. So I've already done this little demon guy, uh, but I figured this character here, I don't draw too many females on my channel at all, so I figured uh, this is a, f <laughs> a lady. So let's go ahead and do some inks with this and record it, toss it on YouTube, uh, so you guys can get some, something out of it. And, you know, I haven't talked to you guys, especially on YouTube, in a, in a very long while. So let's just go over what I'm going to do here. This is Manga Studio 5. Uh, I've tried to start doing my images at uh, 600 DPI. If you guys remember, for those of you that have been following my channel for a while now, the very first videos that I was doing, I, I had a complaint about Manga Studio 5 feeling and acting almost as like a heavier uh, piece of software on my computer. I'm used to Manga Studio 4 and that was a breath of fresh, fresh air once I got into it and how light it was. And the reason for that is in Manga Studio 4, the inking that you're doing is just black and white. I believe it's uh, aliased line work. It doesn't have like a little gray soft edge that most digital art does. And in Manga Studio 5, the settings anyway, they defaulted to color layers. And color layers apparently add a lot of beefiness. It starts to act basically like Photoshop. So, uh, actually here, sorry, I should have shut this off before. I just don't want any audio coming through here while I'm talking to you guys. So. That's what's going on, and uh, so in order to get around that, I had to change my images to 300 DPI so that when I saved, it wouldn't take like 30 seconds to a minute, almost a minute to save. Since then, I brought this up multiple times, but it's kind of relevant now, so I thought I'd talk about it again, is as you're making new layers here, so if you look in the line art layer here, let's make a new layer for this character here. Uh, I have this now changed in the preferences to always be gray. Usually I'll ink in monochrome, which is just a black and white, which I talked about. But gray, it's 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 still good, and it doesn't bog down my computer as much. So if you're having troubles, try that out. Because 600 DPI, at least the way I'm noticing, is a better line quality uh, for what I'm doing here. Okay, so right now I'm working on the inks. Now this is the roughs here. I'll j I just want to kind of go through it so you guys can kind of see where this is starting off at. Um, okay, so this was the, the very quick thumbnail, and as you can see, it's mostly just placement. Try to get the idea, the figure, the gesture down. There's nothing really romantic about this, nothing too special. I don't have to be absolutely dynamic with everything that I do, especially for this stuff. Um, I, I'm one of those believers, anyway, that if everything was dynamic, then nothing's dynamic. So if a lot of the characters that I draw, they're always coming at you, like punching you in the face. Uh, it starts to, like, it looks cool individually, but when it's every single image is like that, it starts to lose its pacing and its punch, you know? So these sort of images here where it's just like a character thrown down, uh, it's it's calming. Uh, there's detail and some fun that goes in there, but the dynamic's not necessarily there. Uh, it's just supposed to be like a nice appealing image so that when we get to the action shots, they feel a little bit more like, oh man, now we've got some action going on. So anyway, here's the thumbnails. Uh, and then what I do is just lower the opacity down. I think it's around there. And then I make my rough layer. And let me just kind of go through this. This is at 50%. So I'll usually just grab blue. And what I'm doing here is you can see I'm just trying to worry about structure, just trying to figure out some stuff. Make the transition between the, the very scribbly gesture and then start putting some like weight to it, you know, start putting some, some, some shape to it. 
and then I lower the opacity down to about 50. And then uh, the next thing I do, I usually do in red, and I'll do like a tighter pencil and or add some costume elements, right? So you can see here in the face, so if I just go back and forth, like this doesn't really look that good looking. It's a face right here. Um, but everything I need is there, the structure of where things should be. So when we add another layer over top of it, we can just start to worry about details and I'm trying to make appealing looking images here, okay? Um, so I will I will say this too because I, I like to be critical of my work. I think everybody should be um, and I don't want to hide behind things. I, I'm not 100% sold on this twist here. Uh, and I will fall back on the handicap of deadlines. I, I don't think once we get to the inks that it's, it's a huge deal. Uh, but I, I do think something feels a little off with it. And I'm not 100% sure uh, if, if that's correct. You know, in flipping the image, it's there. I, I'm wondering if maybe like adding a little bit of like the, the lap muscle here like this might help that. Because she has a little twist going on because we've got her ribs here. And her stomach's kind of coming in here. So... Actually, let me see if we can just kind of, I'm going to put like a little line for her abs where her uh, belly button would maybe show up here. Now, to get around this, the, the, obviously, we'll just be look at some reference online. And I tried to do that for this area up here because a lot of twisting is, is very difficult to do when you're um, drawing this sort of stuff, right? But anyway, so we got all that. And uh, now we're going into the, the inks. Now, just let me close all these layers. I just want to lower my opacity here so that as I'm drawing, over top, all the information I need is here. Um, obviously, that's that's all we're doing here. You guys know how this works. So let's grab our inking tool. Um, for me, what I like is the mapping pen. So far, I've been using it for a while. Uh, brush size is 0 0.70. And uh, lately, what I've been trying to do is let me just save this up here. Do 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 do. So as you can see, it's it's actually taking a little bit here because I am streaming. But uh, normally, when I'm in here, I'll like you know just kind of get like these sorts of chunky lines and I like the art style of that and I don't want to lose that uh, but lately I've just been trying to go a little lighter just to see if I can get a little bit more range uh, and I'm, I'm digging the results I feel like there's some stuff that I'm able to get in here uh, you know, like these really finer lines uh, most of it honestly will probably get lost once I get coloring in there but as an ink drawing it feels good and I'm trying not to do too much shadow work I'm trying to let the color do the shadow work for me here okay so in poses like this, uh, you know, the face is very important, and I don't like to just jump in right away. Male faces, I'm usually a little okay with it, but female faces are very important. Uh, I don't know necessarily why that is. I feel like uh, when drawing, it's like it's very hard to get away with an, um, I don't want to say an ugly face, but something that's not 100%, you know, like a model. Uh, for whatever reason, with women, it's like almost uh, you have to have a certain look for them. Uh, for people to even appreciate the style, I suppose, which is really, really odd. I don't think it's fair, um, but it's, it's going to take some brave artists, myself, you, everybody else that's out there to kind of break that up, you know, um, so we can get some different styles. And there's lots of artists that actually do it, but if you look at, like, uh, you know, I'll use, like, um, Marvel DC or any of the, the big, the big, big boys, big girls out there that are producing like the superhero books and stuff. A lot of them, they're all, they've all got that very sexy look to their women and it, it's hard to get out of that. Um, but like I just said, you kind of have to figure it out. So this character here, um, what was, uh, it's a woman with blue gill or blue skin, gills and seashells and seaweed type clothing. Uh, an kind of like an Atlantean you know, uh, something like that. So that was my instruction for it. So I'm trying to give her, you know, she's got to look like a woman. Uh, so the only way that you do that is make it look like a human woman, right? Uh, so I'm just trying to add some things to her that are a little bit different. She doesn't really have hair. She's kind of got like these, I think it's going to, when I color it like a coral or something kind of like dreadlocks on her hair. And I didn't, I don't have time to design brand new characters uh, for these. So you can see like the design on these characters are very, you know, there's nothing, you, there's some unique elements here with the horns trying to be creative and, and things. Um, but like here, I don't have the time to sit down and worry about character design in here. So you, you kind of have to go in and, at least for myself, try to figure out ways that you can rely on your visual library, you know, like, 
That's why I'm a big believer of good, look, getting art books, concept art books, looking at other artists online that don't necessarily do comic books. Comic books are great for a lot of reasons, and you guys know I love my comics. But concept artists, it's their job to create things that don't exist. And not to say that comic book artists don't do that. God knows they do. But when your job as a comic book artist is to tell a story that's much different than a concept artist whose job is to, to design something that doesn't exist and make it believable, right? Um, so I talk a lot about concept art, just even looking at it, like even pick up a video game you like and see if there's an art book for it. It might be a little expensive, but you gain a lot there. And when it comes to, to design choices like this, like when you get there, they, they might not all be winners, probably rarely will be winners, but what it does do is in the back of your head, you're, you're kind of cementing in um, some some design choices that might get asked of you later on in whatever career you're doing, you know? So here I, I had drawn an ear like a woman, or like a human woman, but uh, I figured, you know, let's try to make this a little bit more, I want to say alien, because she's supposed to be more fishy. These are gills, and I don't even know if these are really good gills to be putting here, but I don't want to give her an ear, just sort of like the ear hole. I'm just going to build up some line weights here just to make it look more complicated in there than it really is. That's a little trick I've I've learned from looking at some uh, inkers. I don't know if that's necessarily what they're doing, but like in this area here, you know, instead of just going like, okay, so here's an ear going into the chin or, or into the, the jaw. And then here's your neck, and kind of just putting in like black lines. That's fine, but maybe for the, like a clean look, that that's where you want to go. But something like this, maybe something that's got like maybe burn marks, or just you want to add some texture to it. All you, all I'm doing anyway, is just kind of doing this kind of line here like this, except I'm pressing heavily and then lightly, heavily then lightly on my uh, tablet here, so it kind of gets like this sort of look, right? And all you do is you just start building that up. Start somewhere and just kind of. And just know that eventually you've got to get pretty dark. Everything's got to get to a point, right? And like it makes it look more detailed than it really is. You get playing around with that, you guys might dig something like that. So let's clear this here. So what else can we talk about here? Um, we will keep going as I go. Like I say, there's a tons to talk about. I haven't talked to you guys in forever. Uh, but Worlds in Peril should be wrapped up in about two weeks' time uh, at the time of this recording, um, which is actually very exciting. I can't wait to get... Uh, all the backers who've been waiting for this uh, book to come out so they get all the cool artwork hopefully everybody enjoys it and uh, very exciting time when uh, projects wrapping up and for those of you that have been checking out my streams and stuff when we're talking on Wednesdays or whatever I've talked from time to time about wh what's next what are we doing next and I'm very excited to look forward to actually some time off. And I know that's weird. Like, shouldn't take time off, right? Like, but when I'm talking about time off, it's more of um, not that I won't draw. I, I get very antsy when I can't draw. If I miss a day, that's one thing. But when it's like a day or two, it, it gets it actually bothers me. Um, and everything I do needs to start focusing towards like, okay, well, how can I get back to the drawing table to to even just draw some heads, some head sketches and stuff. Uh, so it's very, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I, I wonder if any of you guys and girls out there, if you guys experience the same thing. Let me know in the chat, like, if you guys can't go <laughs> X amount of days without drawing or else you start to get, I'll call them withdrawals, I don't know. But the time off I'll be taking is, I, I don't think I'll be doing client work unless it's, uh, you know, like covers or something or maybe stuff like this from time to time, like, you know, commissions and stuff. They're always a little fun to do. But I'm I'm looking forward to doing some homeschooling. Looking around, I, I I've accumulated so many tutorials over the years that I just haven't had a proper chance to sit down and just learn this stuff. And uh, I'd say over the last two weeks, I, I was looking up some uh, head tutorials. Like, <laughs> as weird as that sounds, really, like, how do you draw heads? And Andrew Loomis, I'm just gonna do this real quick. I know this has nothing to do with this. This is more the stream of conscious BS here with you. Let me just do this so I can uh, delete it quicker. So if you guys have ever read How to Draw or anything from Andrew Loomis, for whatever reason, I, I could 
do the head that he would talk about, you know, the, the circle, you do this thing, you draw this line, um, there's some measurements there, and you kind of do this, but everything started to fall apart, nothing really felt well, and I don't know wh why, there's just, I couldn't put his words to this, and I've read this multiple times since I was a teenager, and eventually, I, I forget whose video I saw, I saw somebody's video, and they just showed one thing, and it just clicked to me, like, oh, that, that's all I missed the whole, t <laughs> the whole time, and all it was, was, here, I'll do the same head, is that division thing, slicing out the side, now the slice here can take a little bit of practice, I'll slice the other side off, um, that, like, I'm, I'm good to go so far, right, it was right here, this is the part that, for whatever, just changed the whole thing, um, so I'm just gonna kind of curve the ball here, is the bottom part right here, you just bring this across, and that's the nose, that's it, that's the one thing, that, for whatever reason, again, I just couldn't understand it. I don't know. So the distance here is the same distance here. That looks a little longer, but we'll just kind of go with it. And then it's the same distance here. We, if you've looked at Loomis, this is nothing new to you. And you just, okay, here's the chin. I like adding this little line here. It just helps to build some planes up. Uh, put the hair up here. Your ear goes here, and then you can start to carve in right here. I like to, this I, I learned from Bridgman. I'm not sure if uh, Loomis does this. I'm sure he does. Um, but that's like where the eye sockets are going to go. And then your nose just falls right here. Just gonna scribble them in. And then your mouth. And that's it. And, and right now, like already, like it's a much more structured head. Right? Whereas with this one, I, I don't know what the hell is going on over here. Anyway, so with a head like this, like I am, I'm digging where this is going, and all that was was research and finding somebody's uh, wonderful tutorial that just spoke to me at a time that made sense that I could understand it. So, in saying all that, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to just doing that, taking some time off, and just getting better and leveling up as an artist, and uh, working on some personal stuff, maybe some portfolio. I don't know, but anyway. So I'm going to save the head here. I'm not going to work on it just yet. It's scary. So where else can we go here? Okay, so let's start doing some, some lines here. Uh, for for whatever reason, I find with females, there's certain lines that, or certain principles that work better, at least in my style uh, for, for drawing here. Um, and one of them is like, it's an, uh, I forget the term of it, but it's like an opposite sort of thing. Let me get more canvas space here. So in this side here, you could almost just go like this, right? Like a, a nice curve. And then this side, you can start doing all the muscle and stuff. And it, it reads well, right? So whatever kind of line you have on one side, you just do the opposite, right? So on this side here, I can see like a lot of, you know, straightish lines. But on this guy, I can just start getting the muscles in there. And it still reads well. You know, so that's what I'm going to be thinking when I'm I'm going in here and doing these lines up on this. So here again, we've got mostly the the thin lines. Now I'm going to stop because I kind of want to put like these looks like scales or more coral on her, and I gave her like this little costume piece here because I don't want her. She's naked. Like this is a naked body. It's superheroes, right? But I don't want her to be naked. I know this is a it's a role-playing book. I, I'm more than sure it's not an adult book. And that it was actually one of the, the things I was thinking of. I was going to just leave her kind of naked with maybe put some coral or whatever over her breast and stuff so that it's not just over the top. But then I was just thinking, like, well, this is an all-ages sort of book, right? So kids could be able to play it. And there's nothing wrong with nudity, but I just don't want, you know, uh, I guess my client in this case to have to deal with potential like losing players or people down the road because of something like that maybe I, I don't know maybe I'm thinking too far ahead uh, but I, I would just rather be okay it's a safe clean book the art it's still serving the purpose um, you know it's not like it's adult dark fantasy stuff where everybody looks like Red Sonia he's got chainmail bras and stuff nothing wrong with that uh, but I, th I think uh, the client in this case he would have he would have let me know about that and if really it's that big of a deal it's not hard to go in there and remove clothing right so I'd rather just do the safe bet here just 
trying to dress this up a little bit. All right, so this is sort of like a, uh, I don't know how you, what, what the hell this would be, kind of like, what do they call it, dickies, I believe they're called, at least in Canada, I don't know. So let's say your head was here, your neck, your shoulders, your torso, look at that, wonderful body. Uh, so if you had like a turtleneck, it's sort of like a turtleneck without it being a turtleneck, and it would stop like right here, and you could wear this under shirts. <laughs> so what I'm just doing is I'm just carrying it uh, down like this. This is like a little dressy kind of piece. That way I can still get the skin showing, you know, like the blue skin. And I don't want to make her ripped, but I'm a fan of having a little bit of muscle tone on the ladies. Especially if you're in the water swimming all the time, man. Can't imagine too many overweight, like Aquaman and stuff. And I'm actually just going to put like a little bit of crustacean growth or something on her. You see this all the time in this sort of thing. It's nothing unique. Hey Zelda. So I'm just gonna put some more coral here. Hey yeah, mama. Uh, what else can we talk about? A little update. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, I'm looking into getting a new tablet. Right now I have a Cintiq 12WX, which I love, which I think is amazing, and I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, but as of late, I've just had the hankering for more space. I want I want more room. Uh, when you guys are watching this, it's full screen. It doesn't matter, right? It, it is what it is. Um, but I've been looking around, and... If the Wacoms weren't so expensive, right? <laughs> I think everybody would be owning Cintiqs or, or something. But because they charge so much, it's a little bit cost prohibitive prohibitive for people to jump into it. And some people don't like drawing on a screen. They like the Intuos. You know, they, they like that. Uh, personally, for line art, like what I do, what you guys are seeing now, which I would go ahead and say most of you people that are you know followers of my YouTube stuff, you guys are probably doing line art as well. I could be wrong. But uh, that was one of the decisions of getting just this 12WX was a friend of mine, and I, I repeat this story quite a bit, but a friend of mine was, uh, he had this Cintiq here, the small one, and he returned it because he, he the color is not very good, and, and he didn't like it. It felt small and blah, blah, blah. So I, I went to him to ask him his uh, opinion on this because I was in the in, in the market to get one to look into making the the upgrade as I like to call it and uh, he was very adamant about me not wasting money on on this model here so I did some research and unfortunately there wasn't really many people that had this model so I couldn't find anything I couldn't really find anybody saying if you're doing comic books don't get it <laughs> Uh, but I was looking around on YouTube, and I forget how I came across it. I found something that just kind of said, uh, might have been somebody, I, I really, it's been so long now. But they said that it was it was good enough. And uh, the price was right at the time, I think it was around a grand or 1500 something like that. Still a lot of money. I got it, and I hooked it up, and it was just, I, I forget if I had any problems setting it up, but once it was, it was... See you later. I, I'm in. <laughs> I the the line quality got so much better, and it just felt more like drawing on paper, uh, and, and stuff like that. It, it isn't the same as drawing on paper at all, but uh, I think for those that are looking to make the transition to digital, it, it's uh, it's definitely a way to to go, or at least to look into. So here, I'm gonna just actually make her hands a little, a little bit more alien. And what the hell? Oops. Easy boy, hitting the touch strip. I'm gonna put a little, little, little bit of webbing here. Why not? She needs to swim. So uh, I've been using this guy here for quite a while. I again, outside of the the the, the Q 
curiosity of drawing on a bigger screen uh, I have no no qualms or anything wrong with uh, with this thing um, but somebody sent me over Facebook they're like oh check with this Unova uh, 22 I think it was HD or something you know silly uh, the price was about a grand it's about the same and then it just started getting my gears going and I've been looking or thinking about getting like the the Wacom 22 HD Cintiq or the 24 not really into the touch don't really care to be honest with you so I'm just looking around and then all of a sudden all these other tablets are kind of coming up and it's and then it gets sketchy, right? Because I've used all I've ever used is Wacom products because that's what you always hear is the best, right? And my experience is only based on this. So anyway, I placed an order at the day today, the day of the recording for a, what is it called? A Huron H U R I O N, I believe it is, 22 inch monitor. So I'll, I'll do a review when that comes in and and stuff like that to see where it goes. But I just want that. I just want more drawing room. I I hate. This is the one downside. If I have a second window open, that's the easiest way I can do this, of just making it, uh, another window on the other side that's smaller or smaller, so I can see more. But being able to draw like this much space while still zoomed in to like here, that's that's insane. I like I just want I, I like that idea. Anybody that's drawn on paper, you gotta know what I'm talking about, uh, especially if you if you've done comic books, right? Like you know what it's what it's like to be able to draw a comic book page, and to see more of your comic page. It's just the way it was. That's the way it is, right? That's drawing. That's <laughs> what paper gets you. So we'll see. If it doesn't work out, I can always return it. But I figure um, what I'm looking for, and this is sort of going back to what I was trying to say without losing my focus here, was. I can't find really many tutorials online of people doing comic book work with these things. And it's a bum out. You know, like, I, I don't really care, it's not what I'm getting these things for, about how painting looks. I, that's not what I like to do, you know? I, I like this. What I'm doing right now, this is what I, I love doing. Line art. Comic book line art. Illustration, this stuff. So I sort of just bit the bullet and figured, you know what, uh, my friend, anyway, which is a good thing that he did, said, don't get this because digital coloring is sucks. <laughs> yeah, it is sucks. That's horrible English, but it's not very good. Just get the big boy. And I got it, and I think this is a fantastic product. I even color on this thing um, with the second monitor open to kind of get the color where it should be. But again, I'm not doing massive paintings. I don't get work to do that stuff. The work I get is usually just what you guys are seeing here. So in saying all that, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Hopefully the line art is still just as good, which I'm, I'm assuming it would be. The only thing that I'm kind of worrisome on is, again, is I, I think a lot of people just hear that, oh, big studios or big artists that are making a lot of money, this is the product they get is Wacom, you know, and, and well, that's, that's the way it is. That's the standard stuff. And, you know, I think if more people maybe took the plunge, we'd be able to see and hear if all these other tablets are just as good. So if you guys are interested, I mean, you can look forward to that. Um, should be informative. Hopefully I can help some of you guys out that might be looking into getting one of these things. Just flip it here, see what's going on. And actually, if anybody's in the, not in the chat, because I can't read the chat right now, I'm just streaming this for YouTube, but uh, in the comment bar, please let me know uh, if you guys have a non-Cintiq tablet that you use to do your comic book artwork with. So let me know in the comments if you do and what kind it is. Alright, so what do we got going on over here? All right, okay. It's the design we're going. I want to see if I can kind of tangle these in a little bit. I 
that's okay. So we got this going, we'll get some more lines here. Hey Zelda. You want pets, don't ya? And it's funny, I've been trying to uh think as well with uh the inking anyway, just going a little slower, slow it down a little bit. There's no there's a rush for deadlines of course, but uh I suppose just thinking a little bit more, uh, just to get a little extra mileage out of your line line weight. So I'm kind of going with that. All right, so I think we're warmed up here. We, can, we may as well try to start the face here. I can't imagine we're going to pooch this too much, but you never know. I'm going to make another layer just in case. All right, so let's get these eyes going. Because if you're a female underwater, you've got mascara on, right? Does <laughs> that look? to put some more of this coral stuff on her and this is uh, what you would call in um, concept art anyway uh, repeating patterns and shapes and what it does is it it um, it makes the design more uniform there's repeating objects that are in there so it things don't necessarily feel out of place it's a uh, A familiar shape that's repeated throughout the design and it just harmonizes it oh both windows are flipping okay that's weird so like these dots here this coral we got the coral up here it's kind of going into this, like the seashell shark fin head thing we got the the, the same patterns on here. We're definitely going to be putting on the legs just to break it up, but as you can see, like it just harmonizes the design. There's a lot of the same elements going on throughout the piece, which, uh, again, helps it. It's sort of, what's, what's a good way of saying it? it? It's the glue that kind of sticks it together. Trying to get some gillish action on the side here. neck. Now I have this line here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure about putting that in there. Her eyelids. Just try to change them up. Okay, so her eyebrows I just want that arch in there, so a lot of there's gonna be a lot of shadow work, but I want to make the eyebrows coral. Or at least again that pattern. Just flip it. Okay, so there's one thing here I'm just noticing I want to change. It's, this is kind of getting nitpicky, but...
No, that's fine. I'm starting to <laughs> noodle here. Alright, so let's save it up here. What else is there that we can talk about? I don't know. Um, just trying to think what's going on. Uh, maybe we can talk about personal projects, I guess. What we'll be working on. Um, the first one that I, I really can't wait to get into. You guys know I've got so many projects that I've always started, never really finished. There's always new stuff. There's always new stuff. There's always new projects to do. But um, I'm actually very excited to get back into... Oh, man. What's it called? Um, Castle Dracula. I think that's going to be a blast to get into. I've been doing uh, from time to time, not much. Just sort of like sketches, just to keep it fresh in my mind. The, the, the stories change so much that I'm not really sure what the project is about anymore. I've lost sight because it's been so long. And, you know, I think the longer you you spend on a project, the more it can start to take on other or other shapes, you know? Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's just it's just different. So it's kind of like knocking the rest of the stuff here. All right, so this twist is going to be pretty interesting here. Let's see if we can kind of get it. Let's so get the back kind of coming in I think it's fine it's fine let's keep going so let's get her rib cage in here heavy line weight down there and do I want the I don't think I want to have like I said uh, there was a belly button I wanted to put in there just to give it like that extra whatever but I think I'm gonna color this I don't I don't think I want her just to be naked from the, you know, I don't want to just give her like a bikini bottom or something. It just doesn't, I don't know, it seems kind of, kind of weak. So we'll do the old comic book stuff where it's, <laughs> it's like painted on clothes. So maybe, what can we do here? I'm just trying to think because I know this is going to go, to, this is going to go to color. So we've got skin, clothing, skin, clothing. We need skin down here. Um, shorts might feel weird. Dang. All right, well, I'll let my brain try to figure this out. We can worry about the rest of the line right here. All right, let's turn our, our pencils off here just to see how that's kind of looking. That's good. Can save it up here. Do 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 do. My computer's actually slowing down today. I don't know. I don't know why. All right. Let's wrap this up here because this video is. I don't know how long this video is going. <laughs> it's gonna be like an hour-long video that I upload here. Uh, let's kind of get a line in here to separate the back from the shoulder. Where else we going here? All right, so I'm going to start working on the rock here. Actually, you know, what? I'm going to try something different here. Let's try one of these texture brushes for the rock. Might be fun. Rough. What's that look like? That's pretty cool. Bit husky. That's quite a bit husky. Yeah, that rough one looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll use that. 
Um, so this is one of the benefits of digital. Not that it's only exclusively to digital, right? Because you can totally do this with like a, a disgusting brush that you've kept around for a very long time and it's it's got ink kind of in it and you get like that it's not a smooth line right but it's it's a, a, a very quick way to get some quick texture to your uh, your work Zelda agrees apparently so I'm doing here at the rocks is what I showed earlier with with her ear area where you're just sort of building up um, pressure and lighting up on the pressure then pressing heavy to build up some volume Zelda stop biting stuff come on no Okay, it's enough. Stop biting. Okay, come on. Come on. That's time to it's time, that's enough. Alright. And yes, we are using that uh, the cheat here, we're hiding her hand. <laughs> And we're hiding actually this leg. I kind of want to have the foot sticking out here, unless it looks really weird. We'll see. To make it look like I'm I'm hiding it but not hiding it. <laughs> it's kind of like whenever you see characters with uh, their hands in their pockets. It's sort of like you know the the artist is struggling with that, you know, like hand anatomy and stuff. But that doesn't mean that you should never draw those things, right? It's just if you're always drawing them, then that's where I think the concern kind of comes in. So just going to be kind of sitting on a rock here. So all on this side, I'm going to have, I'm going to increase the size of the brush here. I'm going to do that same thing, that light to heavy, light to heavy the size of the brush just to build up volume and like some, some texture here it's really cool if you got like a rendering style this is where you can kind of go in there and render each each one of these things that are in light uh, I don't think I'll be doing that though myself so you can kind of see where it's starting to build up some uh, some volume there, right? Like there's there's definitely it just looks a little bit more interesting. And we are drawing through the lag, but that's okay. We got this on a separate layer. So when we get to it, we're just gonna erase the part where the legs are touching. this is just one way of drawing rocks I mean it's not I'd probably draw like a tree bark the same way so there's always definitely uh, different ways to be drawing this kind of stuff okay so I think that's good enough for the rock save it up here and we're gonna go ahead and grab back the old uh, brush I was using uh, what is it the Maru brush I believe oh still save it Uh, we're going here, pen, mapping. And now with this one, I'm going to add finer details, I guess. to round out some of this stuff 
if I had all day to do this image, I would probably, I want to say it might even be up to like 20 to 30 minutes. I'd just be in this area rendering the living shit out of it. Like all these little like dash marks and stuff, I would be, you know, knees deep in that. Because it's always fun. I, I like it. I get lost in inking, which is uh, can be a bad thing because things can tend to get muddied. Uh, but I'm just going to do this sort of thing. It's like a quicker rendering. It just adds the illusion that there's more detail going on in here than there really is. Uh, like all down here, you know, maybe I'll just cheese it. Let's see how this looks. Oops. Somehow it switched to the pencil. That's not bad. Last thing here is I'm just going to draw back and white. I know this video is going on a little longer, and um, I am streaming this, but uh, if there is anybody in the chat, I'm so sorry, I can't see what you're saying. This is just being recorded for YouTube, so if you are in the chat, <laughs> I hope there's other people in there to talk to, and thank you for, for jumping in. I won't be doing this too, too much longer. Hopefully it's done soon. I just want to say thanks again. And again, I'm, I'm noodling here. I, I should really just stop uh, because now I'm adding these little like texture marks, which look really cool. Even though I just said, you know, I could lose myself <laughs> for like 30 minutes or 20 minutes or something, just get in there. Okay, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to walk away from that because if I don't, it's going to get real silly. Maybe I can have her hand. No, that's fine. What I'm going to do here is just so that her hand doesn't look like it's just kind of cut into the rock, I'm going to put some more of the rock back here um hmm. let's try putting her hand in here see how it looks I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, let's just get rid of it. Okay. Let's clean this up a little bit here. Okay. So, got the rock. Let's change that puppy to blue. And let's get back to drawing our, our uh, lady here. And once again, I'm just changing it to blue so that uh, I can see where she is in proportion to the rock because I can delete a lot of this rock stuff. I just want to insinuate a foot there. Again, I don't want to do the hand thing necessarily. Just I don't know. I don't know if it looks good just yet, but we'll see. I don't want to render out stuff on here. I got to figure out still uh, what the design is for her legs. Maybe there's just like a cutout or something like that. How does that look? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You know what? Actually, maybe we don't need skin down here. We can just put coral growing over top of the legs anyway. Might just be fine. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm leaving these open spots here 
helps when we get to the coloring because it just gives it, it it's a nice break right all this is black you know let's say in the coral is white and then black it, it's like a it's stacking your negative space a little better and just it, it makes the eye interested in looking what at what it's looking at you know if everything's just black and white just that strict it still looks nice to the eye but when you start kind of breaking up the shapes a bit like all in here you know or it's like white black white black in here it just makes it look a little interesting if everything looks like this then it doesn't look interesting at least to what I like because everything's just kinda of like wow everything's so detailed you don't know where your where your focus can be now there's masters that do light and shadow and they can just figure figure that kind of stuff out but I, I don't necessarily think you need to be a pro at, at uh, negative space right away it's definitely something to always be thinking about but just being aware of it uh, you don't have to be you know a master at light and shadow to have an idea about that so that your art will just have a better look to it a little more professionalism like you can have a uh, an animation style of art and you just do maybe just clean line art with coloring and that coloring that you do you can have a dark color with a light color with a dark color light color and it still gives it that appeal you know so don't feel just because you don't maybe draw like how I do with this kind of line art or if you draw like other comic book artists or just artists in general that you like and maybe they do a lot of heavy art or heavy sorry shadow just because you do like an animation style doesn't necessarily mean that you have to lose out on not incorporating negative space so again if anybody is in the chat <laughs> I'll most likely be streaming again later today uh, we'll, we'll see How's this look in here? Let's just kind of flip her back and forth. That's fine. I'm not trying to go... T t I mean, it probably does look like there's a lot of detail in here. Uh, I just want to insinuate that it's all kind of coral down here. Uh, just for the color. And this is all costume element here. Uh, so let's see if we can just kind of round out the legs a bit. Maybe that'll help. So we just got her leg here to do, and then I think that's it. Just gonna turn this whole thing off here. here can actually give her like some texture kind of boots Should be pretty fun to color. Okay, so 
let's get this back and we're going to erase the parts that we don't need on this rock so need the foot to show here let's erase this part I should lower the opacity here so I can, <laughs> I can see what I'm doing. I'm starting to just erase too much of it. So in case this is, I'm going to just do one more quick pass just to check uh, over everything here. But uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys got a little enjoyment out of this video. Uh, hopefully we talked about some stuff that might be fun to you. And uh, if there's anything that I brought up during this that uh, helps you out that's awesome please let me know I always love hearing back from you guys and you girls just to hear how you guys' art's going and if you guys are solving problems or if you guys are getting stuck on things it's always nice to hear not hear that people are having problems but sometimes there's uh, people that leave comments and then there's other viewers that come in or even myself and it's like you know what I, I got the same problem I'm still going through the same stuff myself. So it just makes it more normal, I guess. Uh, when we're all struggling on things. Uh, yeah, see, I kind of want to go in here and add some more stuff. Okay, I'm going to walk away from this because if I don't, there's a lot There's a lot in here that I could still noodle. Um, but we got this guy that you guys didn't see, but we finished with the inks on this. So let me just turn the roughs off, and then this is about it. Let me just save and we'll just kind of scroll around here just to take one last look. Okay, so we've got our face here and uh, the coloring should be fun. If you guys are following me on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or any of those places, uh, you guys will check it out there. We'll post it up there. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you guys, if there is anybody in the chat, sorry I wouldn't, wasn't able to chat with you guys. Uh, this was meant just for YouTube. But I figured, since I'm recording it, may as well stream it as well in case anybody's working on art today and they just wanted to come hang out. So, like usual, you guys, uh, next month, content should start coming out a little bit quicker. Uh, we are wrapping up this project here. But again, thank you so, so much, you guys. Keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.